Good morning, folks. We've got a great slate of topics to hit today, including an incredible look at the plasma turbulence-driven Parker wave patterns in the galaxy, the cause of the cyclical disaster. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun are still somewhat active. At least we don't have a filament eruption to diagnose like yesterday. A small, non-scary impact is expected tomorrow night, you may recall. We saw the birth of a new active region on the north. Remember, it can take up to two years after sunspot minimum to see the sunspots return. Bright, crackling areas began popping up after only about a year. If the CME coming was bigger and directly aimed at Earth, the solar wind would be of concern. Days of magnetic instability in the field as we're still taking enhanced plasma streams from the coronal hole. Quick note on the solar particle forcing to start. The continued identification of processes and mechanisms in the upper reach of our planet continues to demonstrate the new and alternative pathways of that energy to force the Earth system. New one here. Up next, the title sort of says it all at this one. The theme of the future is clear when it comes to astronomy, astrophysics, and cosmology. It's not just the missing plasma, but the dust that's hiding it, and its own disappearing act. Today, we take a small step in the dust realm as well, as the ratio of gas to dust in the Milky Way in the small Magellanic Cloud drops more than 20%, from 0.9 to 0.7, which means more dust, which is hiding more plasma, and the electromagnetic forces associated with them. Up next, a confirmation of a talking point and a lead-in to the top story. One of our biggest points is that the various interactions stars have, nova, dwarf nova, supernova, x-ray bursts, transient events, symbiotic brightening, cataclysmic variables, all just a way to say a star was instigated. Here, they find another pretending to be something else. Folks, if we just take the number of official Nova-named events, the stats seem light. But if we include everything likely in that family, things begin to make more sense, especially over long time scales. And so we look to the center of the galaxy. We find the cyclical cause of the Earth disaster and instigation of the Sun. We've been using the modern scaled-up model implied by the most recent galactic astrophysics, the wave electric current sheet instead of the flat galactic plane. This is the easiest way to trigger the recurrent catastrophe through electromagnetic disruption and material introduction. And today, we find the inner circumnuclear region must look the same. Folks, this isn't a whole galaxy. It's just the interior five parsecs. It's already more spiral concentric arms than any galaxy actually has in the visible dust and gas range, and it's only in the region of the galaxy similar to that inside of Mercury's orbit around our Sun. This rippling is indeed far more prevalent of a feature than crossing the galactic plane, and this rippling current sheet is what delivers the magnetic reversal of the galaxy. It's why all the planets are changing already. We're already in it. We've seen the nearby stars towards the center of the galaxy have record outbursts already. They've already taken it, and this is why the crescendo of this 12,000-year age of Earth is on our doorstep again soon. This is how you get the magnetic event on Earth, the ice conditions as the nova dust blocks the sunlight, isotopes of the nova-level events in the inclusions, and impactors as pieces of the shell or asteroids blown off course. Welcome to what made our ancestors think what they thought about the sky. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.